Hey guys, happy Sunday, August 7th. Um, so is the housing market going to crash? It's a question that a lot of people are asking. Uh, I know I've shared some content uh, very recently on exactly what I'm experiencing in terms of, of home pricing and the fact that while we're seeing a lot of um, price reductions, we're not necessarily seeing that translate into price decline. So definitely a, a big difference there. So what I wanted to do is hopefully, because um, I've had a couple of direct messages on why, like what's different today versus what we experienced back in 2008 and nine, and what it, what is stabilizing? I described a market as stabilizing. What is it exactly that is causing the market to stabilize and not actually decline? And so I wanted to put together a couple pieces of information that will hopefully package that up nice and neat for you to understand. Uh, and then also share with you a few metrics that I look at locally that can be applied to basically any market around the country. So wherever you are uh, in your own local market, these are a couple of metrics that you can follow and get a better idea. So I'm going to share my screen um, here and I've got a couple of slides together, which first to give uh, to to give some not just perspective but um, uh, identification as to where some of this content came from, at least from the graphs that I'm going to share. Uh, I am a Dave Ramsey, what's referred to as endorsed uh, broker, part of his network. I represent buyers and sellers that uh, that are referred to us from Ramsey Solutions. It's been a relationship that I've had for well over 10 years, and, uh, and I've always had a lot of admiration for Dave's view on the housing uh, economy. And, uh, and so I sat in, I was fortunate enough to sit in on a, uh, uh, on a call not long ago and was able to, uh, to bring some of these slides over to this conversation. So here's what I want to jump into, right? What do we know? We know that home prices took a strate took a historic gain over the course of the last two years. Um, no, no surprises. One of the biggest upticks that we've seen that we've certainly ever experienced uh, in the past. And uh, I've been talking a lot about supply and demand. And as we know, like basic fundamental principle of housing is, you know, is supply and demand, right? So when we have far greater demand than we have supply. Prices of any product, whether it's a house or, um, you know, rare art, uh, collectibles, etc. Even the automotive industry has been seeing a lot of uptick in terms of seeing pricing. You know, we saw what that, that impact has had on the price of even used cars over the last couple of years. Right. Supply and demand obviously has a big in impact. But there's more to it. The supply and demand part, we know. Right. We know that there's been huge demand coming out of the pandemic. We've had huge incentive as a result of uh, very, very historically low interest rates. We've also seen and we understand what happened, like the story's been told about inventory. So we've had inventory coming to historic lows, uh, largely as a result of so many home sellers just not coming to market who ordinarily might have because they just weren't really sure where they were going to go, right? The last two years has been, has been impactful in a lot of ways. And so I want to dig a little deeper, though, on where we are in terms of inventory shortage. And I thought that um, one place that does not get a lot of conversation is what we've seen by way of new construction, not just in the last couple of years, but when we look back over the last 15, right? Housing took a, we saw a, a historic uh, rise in, in the construction of new homes immediately prior to the last bubble. Over 2 million homes were, were being built um, you know, per year as we approached the bubble. And the reality is, is we didn't have the demand to support it, which is why ultimately the market fell off a cliff together with new home starts. And you can see for the better part of the last decade, the number of new homes just kind of limped along, right? And, and it, was, it was for a couple of reasons. One, the demand and where values were. Uh, in the initial years, but then once the market finally started to gain in momentum and construction started to gain in momentum, we end up entering the, 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 the last two years of the pandemic. And ultimately what happened with, uh, as a result of the pandemic was a massive supply chain challenge causing massive increases in the costs of materials, uh, namely lumber. And so over the course of the last you know, two years, we saw massive increases in cost, uh, which became an issue and again stalled new construction. So an already undersupplied housing market that finally started to get a little bit of momentum 
uh, essentially came to a grinding halt again in early 2020 because the costs and supply chain just fell off. Another reason for record low inventory is one of the things that fueled uh, the last 10 years while we had record low new home construction is we had a lot of bank foreclosure inventory that needed to be absorbed. This was especially apparent in our southern New Jersey region where we had record numbers of bank foreclosures between 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, right? In 15, 16, as many as one out of four homes that were being sold was a bank foreclosure. Well, that's all behind us too, right? The, the, the bulk of that bank foreclosure inventory fell off a cliff uh, or came to a halt or was fully absorbed by 2018, we were finally starting to see some really big price appreciation take place immediately thereafter. And then again, we hit the pandemic. And so the number of bank foreclosures due to uh, foreclosures being frozen, right, a moratorium, which was a part of the original CARES Act, um, it stopped foreclosures altogether. Now, that's a whole nother conversation, right? Um, I which obviously, if anybody's uh, known me for a long time, know that I have a, uh, a deep history in what we refer to as default servicing. Uh, bank foreclosures returning at record levels, not a concern of mine in any, at, you know, at, at all at this point. Uh, and I would invite any inquiry into uh, talking more about that. I'm certainly here. Um, so now that's, you know, that's, that's inventory. Record low new construction, uh, continuing into, you know, no default uh, servicing end of, of, uh, of the market of homes coming to market. Now we get into what's happening in demand. And this is, again, another area that didn't get talked enough, talked about enough back in 2008 and 9 and continues to not get a lot of, you know, a lot of conversation. One of the reasons why we had massive issues in 2009 is that we had record levels of new construction of new homes being built, but we didn't have the home formations um, to support, right? Right now in the last, in, in these next couple of years, we have a massive shift in terms of demand coming from new generations. There are 11 million more millennials than there were Gen X, which is my generation, and, and there are over 5 million alone coming into their first time home buying years over the course of the next uh, uh, five years moving forward. And we just simply don't have enough homes for them. We haven't been building enough homes. There aren't enough homes currently in inventory to support the demand that will continue, right? When we look at the record number of, of, uh, of households, we are at, we have 12 million total more households in the United States than we did back in 2007. So you know, huge expansion in population, um, expansion in uh, uh, demand for housing, and just not the housing to keep up with it. And then on top of it, to make matters even worse, and one of the things that drove values the way that it did, is we look at the amount of investor interest that we've experienced over the last, you know, especially two years. But when you look at, in particular, from Q1 2021 to Q1 2022, so for a year-long period, the number of investor purchasers, which means not owner-occupant primary residents, investor purchases, many of which are institutional. We've, again, heard a lot about that story, which, uh, you know, there's a, there will be another time to go into to go into that conversation. And, and again, and I invite inquiry. But when we look at investor purchases, most of these cities, you can see the most popular, many of these were Sunbelt cities which is interesting, but all across the country, we've seen big investor uh, purchases. But in some of these cities, we've seen as many as almost 25% to one third of all homes sold in some of these cities uh, being sold to investors. So these are areas that are just not gonna see a return to high inventories in a very, very, very long time. Um, in addition, interest rates, while we've seen them tick up just a little bit over the course of the last uh, six to eight weeks, still remain at, at historic lows. Uh, we've seen the inventory, we've, we've seen the interest rates cause a little bit of a slowdown back in the beginning of, uh, of June. Uh, and then since then, we've seen interest rates decline. So right, right now they are teetering almost one full percent lower than they peaked at uh, back in June. So hopefully some of this puts some of these, uh, uh, your thoughts in perspective. If you have any additional questions on what this means to your local town, because obviously it's very dynamic, being communication, I'm here to help and support. I'll see you soon.